Now, let's talk about common injuries in ice hockey players. So what are some of the unique aspects of hockey? Well, the first thing is that there's ice, right? Ice is a low friction surface. So what does that mean? You can get some real good speed. And the other thing is, with youth hockey, there are very obvious variation in skills of how to skate, right? And so that plays a big factor in injuries. Now, hockey players, they do wear a lot of hockey equipment. And what separates the youth hockey players from the professional is youth hockey is required to wear a full face mask. So what injuries do we see? Well, concussions are very common. So are facial lacerations. Now, facial, facial lacerations are less common once all youth athletes have to wear a full face mask. But what can happen is sometimes the face mask is pushed up or the stick kind of gets pushed underneath and they get some lacerations on their face, all right? You also get contusions, both from hitting each other, that puck's flying around, they get hit by the puck even in a non-padded area. And you can get shoulder injuries, even though some youth sports, it's, it's not contact yet, you know, people still run into each other. They're not that great skaters yet. And then the last thing is you can get some ankle issues as well. Well, what about with concussions? Well, one thing that they've tried to institute in youth hockey is decrease the amount of body checking. And so there have been some policies and rules implemented at varying levels of youth hockey to reduce the amount of body checking to see if that will help with reduction of concussions. And studies have shown that it has been helpful with that. The other thing to keep in mind in hockey, similar to football, is there is always risk for more catastrophic injuries to the head and neck region, okay? So that's always something important to keep in mind. So for our injury locations with hockey, of course it makes sense. We talked about head, neck, shoulder involvement, right? But why are there ankle issues in youth hockey? They're in a locked up position, right? The ankle is really well protected. Well, that is part of the issue, right? It's like keeping the ankle in a cast all the time. These kids play a lot of hockey, and they're keeping their ankle locked up all the time. And so their ankles get stiff, and their ankles get weak, right? Similar if you've ever been in a cast or had a child in a cast, after you come out of that cast, they're not able to move that joint very well. Similar idea to what's going on in the ankle here with hockey players. Well, let's get some advice from an, an expert. This is Maddie White. She's also a great physical therapist here. She's a uh, big fan of hockey and may be one of Scottish Wright's number one fan of the Dallas Stars. So a couple of pieces of advice from her are, you can take your skates to a hockey store and they can bake them. What that does is it kind of helps customize the skates to the shape of the foot, which, which may be helpful both with, uh, with comfort, performance, and maybe with some injury prevention as well. Whenever you are dealing with hockey players, yes, they spend time on the ice, but you also need to account for the time that they're spending on off the ice or doing dry land training to, making, to make sure they're not overdoing it, all right? And a couple of points in regards to strengthening and rehab, always remember the hip and always remember the ankle, okay? That can help both with injury treatment, but even more importantly, hopefully help with injury prevention. And a couple other pointers. So this picture on the right, uh, that's myself with some other medical providers. As that uh, we were at a hockey, a college hockey tournament up in Boston, and a player went down and he started having tingling in his extremities. And so we had to activate what's called the emergency action plan. So always have an emergency action plan especially in hockey, because you can have some bad injuries, and there's, you want to make sure you have the, the plan, and you know what you're going to do, especially when you're on the middle of the ice, and there's 30,000 people looking down on you, making sure that you, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. The other thing to be aware of is have a plan for lacerations, right? Even in youth hockey, it may not, it may be, yeah, we have a medical provider there that can sew up or suture the patient, or we're not going to have that there, but we can send them to this urgent care or this other facility to get their laceration addressed. 
And then uh, if you can, be comfortable with some shoulder reduction techniques. So if the shoulder does dislocate, uh, you're comfortable and able to, to help reduce it. and don't have to wait for it to go to the emergency room to get reduced.